Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today Google released 7.1.2 officially and it's now out of beta at least. But for those on the beta program, uh, you'll probably need to use the factory images to do this as for some reason your the second beta has a higher build number than the final release. So you'll probably need to stick to the beta if you do not have the bootloader unlocked. Uh, so yeah, we're going to continue now. Obviously my phone is on 7.1.1 uh, but really, you could be on anything, oops, wrong screen, but you could actually be on any version of Android to uh, do this. There's no kind of prerequisites or anything like that in terms of which Android version you have to come from in order to go to 7.1.2 as we're using the factory images and you could even use the full OTAs and we are not using the incremental ones, which means you have to do them one after the other, which is kind of annoying. So you can see I'm on 7.1.1 and also in the phone status screen, you just want to Take note of the baseband version here. You'll see it's 0381, and that is from Android O, but you might have it at 0379 or 78. And we'll also want to check the bootloader version as well once we get into the bootloader, and then we'll decide whether to, if we need to update the, the radio or baseband or the bootloader. So uh, to get started, I'm going to be using Fastboot for this one. I hope you guys don't mind. I used Flashfire the last time I did one of these videos. So first off, we want to download the Google Factory image. So we're going to click on Acknowledge down here. Then on the right hand side, we're going to click on Angular for Nexus 6P. Scroll all the way down and you can see that they actually released a 7.1.1 build as well as a 7.1.2 build here. So in this case, we're going to be going to 7.1.2. So we'll download this one, click on that and save it somewhere. I've just saved it in my Android folder. You can see I've already downloaded it over here. So we won't worry about that. So once you've got that done, uh, for those asking, the full pixel mod has been updated to support the latest 7.1.2 build. I'm going to flash it in this case just to uh, just to show you guys how to do it. And last but not least, you'll want to choose either Magisk or SuperSU to download and copy over to your device. And uh, I'll leave that up to you. But uh, if you you probably just want to stick with the same one, I guess. And just make sure you got the latest one, of, uh, latest version of each of these, as Magisk has been updated to 12 version 12 and I think that is kind of new okay not really that's from January but that's alright just make sure you got the latest version of both these files and overall you should have at least or at least two files here meaning that the pixel mod and even root you don't have to reroute again but the pixel mod is definitely optional or you could have it in any combination that you really want but what we want to look at is the factory image here so once you've got everything downloaded I'm just going to minimize that and all you have to do is extract a few things here. So right now we're going to open up the factory image. We're going to open up, open that up, uh, the folder, sorry. And we're going to extract a few things. I'm just going to move these so we can extract them. I'm going to take, you notice that my radio is the same as the one that's provided in the factory image. But if you can check uh, just then that the kernel version, so not the kernel, the radio version on your phone is lower, then you might want to drag and extract this file outside here, like that. Uh, I'm going to extract the bootloader. I guess in future you could reboot into the bootloader first before doing or extracting the images. That'll probably make it a little bit easier. But uh, just drag out the radio as well, because most likely you're going to need to update that. that. That is if you didn't come from maybe even the second beta of 7.1.2 or Android O. And as usual, we're going to open up the image zip file here, let it extract to a temporary directory where we will extract the boot, system, and vendor images outside. Now I usually don't mention this, but of course you'll need to unlock the bootloader to do this. And if you're on a custom ROM and you want to stay on your custom ROM, don't do this either because you'll need to wait for the custom ROM developer to update the ROM itself and not flash these factory images on top. Otherwise, you won't be using a custom ROM anymore. So once we've got the image zip open, we're going to extract the boot, system, and vendor. So everything except for the recovery image and just drag those outside as well. You can see now they're kind of not showing um, the user data or cache images because to be honest those aren't very necessary. All you need to do is do a few fastboot commands which I'll show you uh, to in order to erase the cache uh, for actually format it or even format user data if that is something that you want to do. But otherwise we'll be doing most of our operations within TWRP. It just makes it a little bit easier. So we'll wait for the system image to extract, and I guess while we do that, we can move on to our second, we can reboot our phone into the bootloader. 
So if you don't have ADB already installed, uh, you're going to need that. That is something else I forgot to mention, but hopefully you got that when I said fast boot. Uh, so we're going to reboot into the bootloader now. So we're going to power off our device. Actually, you might want to unplug the USB cable as well, just to make it easier to reboot into the bootloader. So uh, yeah, we'll just wait for that to turn off. Sometimes it takes a while, so we'll let that be. And we'll go back to our computer and we can close things that we don't need like so. So we have these files, these images ready and if you didn't copy the pixel mod of magisk zip file that's alright we can do that in TWRP anyways. So once our phone is turned off we usually just hold the power and volume down buttons. I'm going to hold my USB cable and hold those buttons like so and then you'll get into the bootloader like that and then just plug in the USB cable again like so and that should be detected on your computer already so at this point you want to open up the way you use fastboot now this could be different for everyone if you followed my videos on how to do that uh, you'll find it very easy to use fastboot and ADB in any command prompt window but in all other cases just bring up the way that you would use um, fastboot or ADB as you usually would don't follow me if you didn't do exactly what I did so uh, this is something that you need to keep in mind every time you do things like this. So once you have the once you're able to use fastboot, we'll just check that our device is connected properly. So we're going to type in fastboot devices and there we are, that is my serial number and that is connected down there. And what we're going to do now is actually have a look at some of these numbers down here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but my bootloader says 0304. That is the version. I mean 0364, my bad and the baseband right underneath is 0318 so you can tell or you can see that the bootloader requires updating uh, but my radio doesn't so have a look at those numbers and compare the pair and if you if it's um, if the one included in the factory images so these ones up here are newer than the ones on your device then you have the option to flash those which I'm going to do right away and this is how you'll do it first off the bootloader we're going to type in fast boot flash bootloader leave a space in the end here where the cursor is and drag in our bootloader image and hit enter. Now that is done, we want to reboot into the bootloader. So you can use the volume buttons to select reboot bootloader and press the power button, or you can use the fastboot command, fastboot uh, space, reboot dash bootloader. So once we're back in the bootloader, we're going to flash the uh, radio image now. So this is so the new bootloader takes effect. And you can see down here in the version, it's 0367. So you can tell that's flashed correctly. So we're going to flash the radio. Fast boot, flash radio. Leave a space on the end, drag in our radio image. Now you don't have to do this if you're already on the same version or the latest version, but there's no harm in flashing it again. So that is done. We're going to now flash the boot image. So we're going to type in fast boot, flash boot. Leave a space on the end here, drag in our boot image. Just like that, hit enter. Now that is done, we're going to flash the system image now, the big one, it's about almost 3 gigabytes. So we're going to type in fastboot, whoops, fastboot flash um, system. We'll leave a space on the end and drag in our system image, like so, and hit enter. Now this will probably take maybe 2 minutes total, so just let your device do, do whatever it's doing and uh, leave it alone until it finishes, and then we'll come back and flash the vendor image. Okay, so now the system image has finished flashing, we're going to go ahead and flash the vendor image. So we'll type in fastboot, flash vendor, leave a space on the end and drag in our vendor image. Now you might have noticed that I have to change something a little bit. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. It's all fine. So yeah, just flash the vendor image and once, once that is done, we're just going to reboot back into TWRP. So go over to your phone now and uh, let's uh, switch it up. Let's go over to our phone and change it down to recovery mode and press the power button to select it. Now hopefully we'll be booting into TWRP where we'll actually need to copy over a few files that we forgot to earlier or that I didn't tell you but I guess if you've done this enough you probably would have copied them to your phone already. So in fact I'm going to have to bring up this view and uh, that's interesting. Anyway, we won't need that anymore. Of course you'll need to decrypt your device. Uh, so that TWRP can access your data partition, so your SD card or internal storage. 
and and once that is done might want to bring up an extra thing okay here you want to swipe to allow modifications especially if you are planning on flashing the pixel mod but if you said no you can always go to mount and then uncheck mount system partition as read only anyway so once your device is plugged in now uh, I'm going to copy these new files onto the phone here now sometimes you got to reboot uh, sorry not reboot replug your phone and it should come up there we are and from there I'm going to copy let's see I'm going to copy the pixel mod and the latest version of Magisk onto my phone just like that and we are going to go ahead so your system is already updated now we are just doing the finishing touches in fact and what we plan to do here now is to flash the pixel mod and then root our phone as well so the pixel mod of course was optional or is optional and we'll just find it so there we are pixel mod swipe to confirm flash okay that was very quick we're gonna go back and flash magisk as well as the boot image has been replaced with the stock one we will obviously need to flash magisk again to for it to patch the boot image once more to give us that lovely safety net bypass and we're going to tap on reboot system and our phone should boot up quite quickly so I'm going to kind of fast forward this part till we get to our phone and we'll have a look at I think a couple new features I think just one that's pretty noticeable and it's from the second beta of 7.1.2 actually is that they just put back the moves there that, that you'd like the the fingerprint swipe gestures so I'll leave this to finish up and we'll see how it goes after I fast forward okie dokie so our phone is finished booting up and you can see it's just finishing the Android update here and let's go in so if you flash the pixel mod you'll be asked to choose uh, your default home menu uh, I'd just like to show that all our data is still here obviously my apps are still here and I haven't restored anything and let's take a look at some of the well we'll just check to make sure we have everything here so first off we need to check that Magisk is still installed and working properly let's over to the Magisk manager here you can see it's looking really good we have 12 version 12 here and safety net status is a, a go and you can also see that the navigation bar has changed to the pixel look and that means our pixel mod has installed as well you can tell by the grey and blue accents here in our settings menu and of course the pixel launcher is here if I can go to it okay maybe not but um, actually I'll just quickly show that and while we're in settings you can see we're in 7.1.2 and we're on the 5th of April uh, thing here so I guess we can take a look at pixel launcher just really quickly and just to show that it is there once you flash the pixel mod there we are that looks like it and we also have all our icons and all that which is great so I guess we can try out a root app so let's change the titanium backup and we should see that that works as well as usual so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this uh, video on how to update your rooted or modded Nexus 6P to the latest version so that's 7.1.2 and if you have any questions or any other videos that you might want to see I can take that or those into consideration and have a look at them but uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one